Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the Ethical Edition YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a few simple sustainable swaps that I have made in my everyday life. So last week a friend asked me where do I start with making sustainable swaps and is it really expensive? And these are two of the biggest questions when starting to embark on a more sustainable living journey. So I've put together eight things that I've changed around the house that haven't really impacted my lifestyle, have saved me money and made me more sustainable. So first up in my personal care routine, I no longer use spray or tube deodorants. Um, deodorant sprays, as you may well know, come in uh, metal tubes that definitely cannot be recycled and are also responsible for putting lots of horrible particles into the air. So you may have heard that one of the big issues with mainstream brand deodorants is aluminium. Now aluminium is actually in the form of a compound in these deodorants and it's part of the antiperspirant ingredients. But what these ingredients do is actually block the sweat glands. So it's not actually stopping you from the process of sweating, it's stopping the sweat from coming out which in turn gives you more buildup of bacteria and makes you smell bad. So whilst you may have these strongly fragranced antiperspirant deodorants that block the smell and give you this nice false fragrance for a little while, it's actually in the long term not really helping your body. So I have switched to a refillable deodorant from a company called Wild. I've done a previous video about them. And whilst most days of the week I'm not really wearing deodorant, I do like to have an option for either super hot days or if I'm going out somewhere to socialize, which has not been for a while now. Um, but it's nice to have an option, a sustainable option, a natural option that's actually gonna do the job, but also not cause any harm to your body. The armpits can be a particularly sensitive area of the body and they're really close to the lymph nodes. So you wanna be really careful about the type of products and ingredients that you're using around there. So item number two is dry shampoo. Now, I didn't think that I'd be using this during lockdown when I don't have to go to work or I don't have to go out somewhere, um, but actually it's quite handy for just popping into your friend for a, ready for a Zoom call. So this is a DIY recipe that I make at home. It's so simple to make, so cheap to make, um, and it looks a little bit like this. This is actually just my base recipe at the moment, so that contains arrowroot powder and cornstarch. Um, this is great on its own for using if you have blonde hair. If you have darker hair, you can add things like cinnamon, uh, cocoa powder or charcoal to change the color, which doesn't give you those kind of white streaks that typically a normal spray uh, dry shampoo would anyway. Um, the same kind of factors apply really. Dry shampoo, I haven't bought it in a really long time, but I think it's probably around two, three, five pounds a can, depending on what brand you go for. Um, and to be honest, I don't even know the full list of ingredients that goes into them. I just know that this is a super natural option. Um, it doesn't block any of the hair follicles on the scalp. It doesn't cause any hair damage. It's a really simple natural option that basically does the job for you. I think maybe what I'll do is pop up a little video on how to make this either on Instagram or over on here. And then you can give it a go for yourself. Swap number three and the last personal care product in this particular video is a body scrub. Now, it's not something I used to use a lot. It was like an extra minute in my shower and I just did not have time for that. However, as a 30 year old woman now, body scrub is something that I've actually really come to enjoy. It's really invigorating, makes my skin feel really soft. Um, it also helps with moisturizing a little bit in this particular mixture. So this body scrub is made with some crushed up almonds. It is super easy to make at home. Um, Although microbeads have been banned for several years now, um, there's still lots of ingredients out there that aren't that great for washing down the drain. So this is a really nice zero waste option, particularly if you can use things that you've got either around the home or waste ingredients like your coffee grounds um, to put into this particular scrub. So this is something that can last in the fridge for up to a couple of weeks. It's really easy to make um, as like a single batch and it doesn't cost me a fortune in buying tubs of scrub. Again, I'll pop up another little video on how to make this at home. So next up, my number four swap is buying secondhand clothes, whether this is actually at charity shops, when they're open, through Depop, through eBoggers, there's three main reasons why this is a sustainable swap. Firstly, it saves you money. Clothing is so much cheaper in charity shops. 
partly because it's had that previous life, so it's not at its full value, but it's gonna save you money and it's gonna put money in the pockets of charities. Winner. Number two is that it stops you from buying from a fast fashion brand perhaps, and that's slowing the demand for that type of clothing, which is ugh, my number one. It's a really important thing for us to be doing at the moment. You know, fast fashion brands are one of the biggest sources of just waste and pollution worldwide. They do not treat their workers well. They are just giants in the marketplace and there's loads of other really small brands out there who are doing such great things and treating their workers well and using sustainable materials. And we really wanna take the demand away from those big fast fashion baddies and put it into the pockets of something better. So if that's a charity shop or that's a sustainable brand, I don't care, just take that demand away. And number three is that you are gonna be diverting waste going to landfill. You're extending the life of that garment and that is a good thing to do. The top places that I shop for, shop for secondhand stuff, obviously charity shops aren't really an option at the moment. Depop is amazing and you can find lots of, you know, the latest trends, you know. If you are particularly into branded items or you're not so sure about wearing something that maybe somebody else has worn for a couple of years, maybe 10 years, then you can try an app slash website called eBloggers and on there, you can buy secondhand items that may have only been worn for one picture. So there's a lot of influencer fashion on there. It might be items that have been gifted to an influencer by a brand and they've taken five pictures in it and then they don't want it anymore. So on eBloggers you can find lots of basically new clothing at really discounted prices and it's still great quality, it's still in good condition. I'll pop the links to both below. I'm sure you're probably aware of both of them, but just in case I'll leave it in place for you to find them. Number five. So now I've got a couple of around the home items for you, and the first of which is cut flowers. These beauties were from a bouquet that I had as a bridesmaid for my friend's wedding in 2019. And all I did was take them out of their water, lay them out to dry, and they look pretty cute still, you know? So if you are gifted a beautiful bouquet of flowers, perhaps for a birthday or something, then there's bound to be some of the foliage or the flowers in there that you can dry out and then you never need to buy any more. Now the cut flower industry is a major source of chemical pollution into soil. There is huge overuse of water for irrigation um, and it's not one of the best industries for treating their workers very well. It was an industry that actually began in England and the Netherlands but soon cheaper labour and better growing conditions were available in countries like Kenya, Ethiopia and Colombia where workers were not treated very well, farmers didn't always have full rights and the transport of the flowers from country to country wherever the supply was required is refrigerated lorries that require a lot of fuel um, or they're flown which again air travel not great so the two options i usually go for is either getting outside and picking some grasses or flowers obviously not from other people's gardens um, or I hang on to various bits of foliage that I might be gifted in a bouquet um, and hang on to them and pop them in vases around the house. Next up we have candles. Now I'm totally down for supporting small businesses who make really cute lovely candles. I know a lot of them, I own one of them, um, but candles are something really easy that you can make at home and then that way you get to choose what type of wax that you're using, you get to choose the ingredients that are going into it. So. Whilst it's not a necessary sustainable swap, it's a really nice one to make if you are a candle lover and it's something that you can't live without. So I, again, I think I'll pop up another little DIY video for making candles, but the top three things for me are knowing which wax I've got, being able to reuse containers, and knowing that I'm putting in sustainably sourced essential oils as a fragrance rather than either something synthetic or something that's not particularly sustainable. Swap number seven is for the kitchen, and one that I do not regret making at all, and that is to use old t-shirts as either kitchen roll or cleaning cloths. You just use them, pop them in the wash, and use them again. So this saves on a huge amount of waste, particularly kitchen roll. There's a lot of confusion about what you can actually do with kitchen roll. If you haven't used it, it can kind of be recycled at some major facilities as a paper product. If you've used it, it is trash. You, you, you can't recycle it, it's gotta go in the bin. 
So this is where these save you a lot of waste in the kitchen. Um, similarly for cleaning cloths, you get a lot of microfiber cloths that don't last very long or those terrible like wipes that claim they're biodegradable but it takes a hundred years for them to biodegrade. These are a great option, particularly if you've got, you know, something like an organic cotton t-shirt that maybe has got a really bad stain on it or doesn't fit anymore. Um, obviously there's other ways that you can recycle clothing, but if its destiny was going to be the bin, then these cloths, cutting them up, I've, I think I've had this about two years, you know, and they, they're great for me using with the business as well because I make a lot of mess when I'm creating products. So they're a really nice way for me to cut down on waste and super cheap, you know, I don't have to pay three pounds for a pack of terribly biodegradable, not really biodegradable wipes full of Dettol. So number eight and the last swap in this mini quick swap video is wrapping paper. So it's something that we're gifted on, you know, many occasions, birthdays, Christmases especially. And so it's really easy to reuse if you're being gifted it by other people. I usually take great care in opening things. I peel off the sellotape and then I roll up the paper ready to use for another occasion. Um, of course, this is saving you money. Wrapping paper again is something that's just ridiculously expensive. Um, a lot of wrapping paper that you will get in your kind of standard gift card type shops. Um, will often be coated paper, so that can't be recycled. Um, another great source of paper is to be able to reuse things that your packaging comes in. So one of my key swaps has been the Who Goes to Crap toilet paper. You get a really nice, decent sized square out of this. You can usually fold it to cover the, give yourself a pat on the bum, which I'm totally fine if you want to put that on the outside of your present. But the paper's pretty cute, particularly the premium. And you know, you can wrap things up, tie a bit of string round, and you could definitely buy this kind of paper in Paper Chase. Just saying. I was reading a statistic in January that in 2020 Christmas, it was estimated that people threw away 108 million tons of paper. If you think about how light wrapping paper is, 108 million tons is just the most enormous volume. And we really have to ask ourselves, are we buying paper to wrap around something for one day? Yes, yes we are. So if you can reuse it, not only is it saving you money, it's saving an enormous volume of waste. And you know, set the trend among your friends and family. It's a really great thing to do to be reusing things. This year, I re-gifted my mum presents that were wrapped in paper that she had decorated herself last year. And I think it's nice when you show somebody that you, you've kept something and they've put some thought into. So another quick easy swap, raid your toilet paper stash, or hang on to things that you're gifted this year, and then next year you'll be all set. So that wraps it up, excuse the pun. Um, but thank you so much for joining me here again today. I promise I will follow up very shortly with some of those DIY recipes for you to give a go. If you are new on your sustainability journey, I hope it's given you a few tips and tricks to start having a think about. If you're already on your existing sustainability journey, I hope that it's given you that nice little pat on the back that you deserve for making these changes. See you next time.